Hey folks, welcome to week 15 of visual design. We are at the last final full week of a very long and strange semester. So this week we're going to wrap things up by working on our fourth and final project. Uh, and we're going to talk about what sort of due dates look like for these next two weeks. So this is our last full week. Like I mentioned, next week is finals week where we really only have a few days to get some work done. So it's not a complete week. So this is really uh, the last of that. Okay, so let's take a look at the syllabus. Normally here in week 15, we would have met on May 5th and 7th. And let's talk about some of the content I mentioned last week. Uh, that we were not really going to be able to get to uh, Adobe XD fully as planned simply due to the timing of everything and people having some difficulty working online. This is a class that's really difficult to do online. Uh, well, I have done classes like this online uh, at other schools. Uh, we don't normally have this much content. We usually only have eight weeks worth of content, so about you know 50% of what we would have covered here. So I'm pretty happy with everything we covered. Now, that being said, even though I am not going to be demonstrating Adobe XD to you guys and you are not doing project 5 which is an Adobe XD project you'll notice over here in canvas under announcements I did uh, leave up these two announcements for week 15 and week 16 uh, talking about Adobe XD now back in week 14 there was a video uh, intro to Adobe XD week 15 there's another video uh, more intro to Adobe XD and then next week you'll see the last one typography in Adobe XD so you're probably thinking why leave up the videos if we're not covering it well it just gives you an opportunity to be introduced to the program and perhaps later on if you take uh, one of my UX design or web design classes where we actually use the program on a regular basis you'll be familiar with it coming into it so something to think about at least sort of watch the intro one uh, at minimum and then at least sort of wrap your head around it. Okay, now what we are actually going to be working on is we're going to continue in Adobe Illustrator, which we had been working on uh, back in week 14. You guys were working on your vector celebrity portrait, which you have finished at this point and has been turned in. I'm sure they're all wonderful and amazing, uh, and I would have given you feedback by now. So this week we are going to tackle project for your typographic poster design, which is not going to be, which is pretty much all we're going to be working on this week. Uh, in week 15. So again, you can watch the Adobe XD videos just to get introduced to the program, but really you're going to put all your effort into this project for typography poster design. Now you already have all the skills to do this because we've covered typography uh, as a concept uh, historically and of course in Adobe Illustrator. So now we get to implement some of that. So you'll notice that project for typographic poster design is not due until the final week. Now, specifically, what day is it due? Well, again, back over here in Canvas, back to Assignments, you'll see that Project 4 Typographic Poster Design is due on Wednesday, May 13th at 8 a.m. So make sure you get that turned in on time, so that'll give me enough time to give you some feedback on it, okay? Uh, also, uh, within that project being due on that date, you'll see here that I have turned on peer reviews. Uh, they've been turned on for the last couple of projects, so this gives you the opportunity to earn some participation points to go in here after the due date and give some of your classmates some feedback. Tell them your thoughts. How did it work out? What did you think about their project? So help each other out with some comments. It'll help your participation grade, uh, and also I'm sure your classmates would love to hear your opinions. All right, so what is Project 4 exactly? Let's take a look. So in the projects folder, you'll find here the uh, project for typographic poster design. And the theme, of course, is typographic illustration. So let's talk about what that is. Now, as it says here, graphic design is often defined as a partnership between image and type, uh, a balanced and dynamic dance between the two elements of communication. Together, they are used to metaphorically illustrate an idea. Sometimes, however, typography alone can be used to literally illustrate an idea by emphasizing the meaning of the word that it's trying to illustrate using nothing more than letter forms. Some graphic designers have actually become well known for this sort of witty use of letter forms. One gentleman in particular, Herb Lubelin, uh, is somebody we're going to focus on. He is just such a typographic designer. And to the right here are some examples of his work. Let's go over and take a look at some more of Herb's work. 
Okay, so this here is Herb Lublin. He was a graphic designer uh, who worked uh, mostly through the 60s and 70s and uh, focused almost 100% of his work strictly on typographic design. Um, now this here is sort of a collection of all of his typographic designs. While he did work in color, he really liked working in stark black and stark white. Uh, this was all in the age of pre-computer design, and so and so typography was really important to Herb Lublin. It was, it was a major part of his design work. And like I say, it's pretty amazing if you look at his collection of work uh, to understand this was all done by hand pre-computers. All right, let's look at some specifics. So here's a close-up of some of his more famous pieces. Uh, you might be familiar with the pantyhose line legs. They come in a plastic egg, so he designed the logo for that. Uh, also, PBS, he designed the logo for the public broadcasting station, uh, which uh, everybody has. Everybody's town has a PBS. Uh, as well as some of these uh, other uh, typographic pieces here. There's some clues in here as to what we're going to be doing for our poster design. Uh, he designed the logo for uh, the musical version of The Sound of Music which is this here. Uh, this is one of his famous posters, Beards, which incorporates some uh, illustration work with typographic work. Okay, now specifically what we want to focus on is his work with typographic uh, metaphor, using letter forms to uh, indicate the word uh, as it's described something. So here we have the word families, but you'll notice that uh, the three letters here, the I, the L, and the I, uh, he has altered, he has made some basic changes to uh, by uh, making them different heights, uh, adding a dot to the L, even though Ls don't normally have dots on top of it. The idea is that this represents a family. We've got two parents and a child, right? Um, and this was from a publication that Reader's Digest put out. Reader's Digest is a, is a monthly book, a monthly magazine, monthly periodical. And so he did this for them. And so through some basic manipulation of black and white typography, you'll see that he not only spells out the word families, but then does something illustratively here to define the word families. And he made some other changes. He's moved the letters closer together so that the F is just touching the lowercase a. Uh, and the lowercase e and the lowercase s are butted up against each other. Uh, so there's obviously some other minor typographic adjustments, but the major thing is right here where he adjusts these three letters to represent a family. All right, here's another example. So this is the word marriage, of course, and this is such a subtle and small change that you can almost miss it. But just by simply reversing the second R so that both of these uppercase R's are facing each other, uh, you'll see that it looks as though there are two characters sort of holding hands and sort of being nose to nose with each other, right? Uh, it's really interesting how this basically uh, looks like a marriage and, of course, says the word marriage. Now, also kind of sneakily, there's tiny little type inside the two openings of the R's, right? These are referred to as counters, remember from our typographic anatomy quiz. So it basically says marriage is the most uh, licentious of human institutions. So it actually has a message inside of the message. But simply by manipulating these two letter forms, he gets the word to not only say what it is, but looks like it is. Now, these are very subtle typographic illustrations. There are much more complex typographic illustrations that you've probably seen out in the world. Um, but what I like about his work is that they're subtle, that you almost kind of miss them. And remember, one thing we learned about typography is because your audience knows how to read the letter forms, you can take risks with playing around with the characters. You can remove characters, you can change them, you can alter them, you can destroy some of them, you can hide some of them, and we are not going to lose readability. And Herb Lublin did a really good job of really playing into that fact. Okay, so back to the assignment. So there's a couple other examples from Herb over here. Uh, we saw marriage, we saw families, but this one here, mother, uh, is actually a very popular one uh, where he takes the ampersand, uh, which is the and symbol, uh, and so it says mother and child, and so he takes the and symbol, puts it inside the O, and then the word child is in small uppercase letters inside the ampersand so that it resembles the O represents the womb, the ampersand represents the fetus, uh, and of course the word child is sitting inside there. So again, it's a visual representation of what the words mean. So that's what you're going to do for this assignment.
So uh, in sort of in honor of Herb Lublin, uh, in, in a way that he would work, uh, you're going to choose one of the words provided below. We'll get into those in a second. Think about its meaning. Look up the word if you have to. If you're not sure what the word means, look it up. Even if you know what the word means, look it up. Look at some of the other definitions that are attributed to that word. Uh, use only that particular word. You cannot add any other words. You cannot uh, change the word. You have to use the word that is given to you. You are to illustrate the meaning of the word using only letters. Now, you must set the, set the word using only one typeface. So you're going to pick one font. Whatever font you want, whichever font you feel is appropriate for the word and does justice to the word and really feels appropriate for the word, but only one typeface. So you pick it. You're only going to do it in black, just like Herb did over here. We're not going to add any color. And so it's going to be black letters on a white background, just like Herb Lublin's work. Okay. Beyond that, you can do whatever you want to the characters. You can utilize scale, you can rotate them, you can reflect them like you did with the two R's in marriage. You can repeat some of the letters if you have to. You can repeat the whole word if you want to. Um, if you have to use the word more than once to get your point across, that's fine. But remember, just that one word. Uh, you can use pieces of the word or as much of the word as you would like. Remember, you can do whatever you want to the letter forms to help illustrate the meaning of the word so long as you don't use lose, sorry, so long as you don't lose readability. That's key. You have to be able to read the word and it has to be a visual metaphor. So you can chop up letter forms any way you wish. You can even squish the letters if you like. This is that one instance where you're allowed to squish letters if it helps you get across the meaning. So in the end, the word must remain readable and your illustration must be in service to the definition of the word as you see it. Okay, so here's your word choices. You can pick the word devotion. You could pick ambush, commune, accelerate, altitude, manipulate, or catapult. So those are your word choices. Devotion, ambush, commune, accelerate, altitude, manipulate, or catapult. If you're not sure what the words mean, look them up. Even if you are familiar with the words, still look up the definition. That'll help you get a better handle on how you can best illustrate it. Now, of course, you can use any of the typographic tools in Illustrator that we covered a couple weeks ago. Type tool, character, paragraph palettes, area type tool, touch type tool, etc., etc. Any of the other type tools that you might have seen in some of the videos that you watched. Pretty much anything related to typography. Now, once you get that completed, uh, if you want to get some extra credit, you can create a second version of your design, but now for the extra credit, you're allowed to add color to it. Now, not just arbitrary color, but the color palette that you use should help to emphasize the meaning of the word further. So that would be your extra credit to do a second version of it, but in color to help better emphasize it. You're going to work on a 14 by 8 inch document, okay, so it's a long, thin rectangle. Okay, so 14 by 8 inch document. And if you'd like to learn more about Herb Lublin, I did link his Wikipedia page here. You can certainly find lots of research on Herb. Now remember, go back to the video where we went over the typographic tools in Illustrator a couple weeks ago. Uh, hopefully you've been practicing with Illustrator using type so that you can uh, create some really cool, interesting typographic illustrations uh, in honor of Herb Lublin here. Okay, so black and white, choose your word, uh, put some thought into it, and again, this is due at the end of the semester. So you've got this entire week and then half of next week to work on this. It is due on May 13th, and that will be our final, final project for this class. Uh, you guys have finished quiz four, the typographic anatomy one. You have finished your vector celebrity portrait. So all that is left to do is this typographic poster design and go and watch a couple of those Adobe XD videos just to become familiar with it. Um, other than that, we're all done. Next week, though, there will be one more video lecture just to wrap things up for the semester. You guys have been hanging in there like troopers. I really appreciate it. And uh, if you have any questions, thoughts, or concerns, be sure to email me or drop in onto my online office hours. As always, I am happy to see you. All right, take care of yourselves. Talk to you soon.